Hey, what's up everybody? Welcome back, Brandon again, and today's video is going to be on Ramadan. Now, for those of you unaware, Ramadan is quickly approaching. It's in July, and this means my inbox is getting flooded with Ramadan questions, and I'm sure a lot of your other favorite fitness YouTubers are as well, as I've seen videos pop up by Jason Blaha, and I believe Louis Marco posted a video as well. Now, I say I believe only because I haven't actually seen these videos. I didn't want to watch them, so I didn't want them to influence what I was going to say. But I talked about this subject last year on my previous channel, and it got a pretty good response. And again, I've been getting questions regarding this, so I thought I'd go ahead and do the same. Now, for those of you unaware, those that observe Ramadan, it's a period of fasting. Now, this includes both food, water, in some cases swearing, and in other cases, sexualness. Bow chicka wow wow. But it's from sun up from sundown for again a period of time in July. And oftentimes this leads to questions regarding those people who train. What can they do? What should they do? Are they going to lose all their gains? Well, luckily enough, I'm here today to tell you that no, you will not lose all your gains given the fact that you should hopefully still be eating a sufficient diet for whatever your goals are. Now you might actually be interested to know that there's been studies regarding Ramadan and athletic performance as well as bodybuilding. And those studies have actually shown that fasting and Ramadan don't play a big role in overall results. So I'm going to go ahead and link two examples below. I will say, however, though, that these are small sample sizes as well as only singular studies. So there might be other stuff out there that you can actually research. But the first one, for example, takes a look at athletic performance during Ramadan because a lot of time athletes feel like because they're not able to eat throughout the course of the day or hydrate properly, that perhaps their performance will suffer. Well, if you look at the study, again, that will be linked in the description box below, you'll see that this isn't the case. However, what might be the case is levels of stress are really high because as you probably know, most of us tend to freak out about these things as is. If we don't get meals in on time, if we're not fully hydrated, things of that nature. But again, relating it back to what the research points towards is that performance is not overly affected. The second study I'm going to link is actually directed more at bodybuilders. It took a look at training fasted versus training fed, and it showed over the course of Ramadan that there wasn't much difference between the two groups here meaning that if you wanna train fast as you can, or if you wanna schedule your training around the times where you're actually fed, you feel you perform better, you can do that as well. And overall, over the course of those 30 days or so of observing Ramadan, your actual gains shouldn't really differ. So this begs the question, is it better to train in the morning or is it better to train at night, fasted or fed? Again, it really just depends on personal preference. If you're the type that feels that you train better fasted, go ahead and do that if you think that it won't affect performance. On the same hand, if you're the type that really feels that you need to train fed or you need to get in a meal right after working out, you're going to have to go ahead and set up your schedule accordingly. In the long run, it's only 30 days and you won't see much change either way. So again, the overall thing to take out of this is just make sure your nutrition is placed in the course of a given day, as well as making sure your training's on point. And in the end, you'll stay big and still be able to conform to Ramadan. In the meantime, everybody, thanks so much for watching. And as I said, stay big.